Sometimes in the spring or after a heavy rain, we get to the body of water that we are fishing and we are greeted with chocolate milk. Really, really muddy water. And a lot of us may automatically just go home after seeing that chocolate milk. But the great thing is, is that bass actually can thrive in muddy water. And there are three simple rules that I always follow when I am fishing muddy water. So let's jump into some muddy water bass fishing. Now, before we get into the three rules of muddy water fishing, I actually want to tell you why you should be excited to fish muddy water. And the biggest reason, and this is something that I have seen across the nation in many different lakes, especially during the springtime, is that when you have muddy water, a lot of times it will make fish that are ordinarily really, really hard to catch, and it will make them very catchable. These really big fish that are actually really smart and they don't get big for, for no reason at all, all of a sudden they go from being able to see their environment very well to having to rely on their lateral line. And so therefore those big fish, because they can't see your lures that well, a lot of times you can actually get them to bite in muddy water a lot better than in clear water. So in that mud, you have a great opportunity to catch some really, really big bass. I have seen this with big largemouth, and I have seen this with big smallmouth across the nation. Now that you know that, let's dive into the three rules of muddy water bass fishing. Now the first rule is that not all mud is created equal. And what I mean by this is that sometimes you get to a body of water and the whole body of water will look muddy, but there will be certain little pockets within all that mud where your water clarity is actually a slightly a little bit better. For example, a couple of years ago, I was fishing a local river. And when I got there from your eyesight, it all looked pretty much the same. But when you got on the boat and you would actually put a lure in the water, there were sections of this river where you could see down only about three inches. And then there was a section of this river where you could see down about six or seven inches. And although that doesn't sound like a huge difference, it made a huge difference. That day that I fished, I caught zero fish in that really muddy water where I could see less than three inches. They all came out of that six or seven inch mud. So this is something that I really want you to pay attention to when you're out there on the water because you may see these really small differences in the muddy water that you are fishing. The other thing is, is that you never wanna fish what I call fresh mud. This typically happens right after a rain. If you fish maybe a clear body of water and it rains, you have a, a section of that lake that's going to get muddy. If you can actually see the sediment, that mud in the water, that is not a good place to catch a bass. Now, I'm not saying that the bass aren't there, but what happens when you have a lot of sediment, a lot of debris in the water is that a bass is literally just going to sit in a position with its mouth closed because a bass can't breathe really well. It can't actually live very well in an environment that is nothing but sediment floating around because if that sediment gets into their gills, they're gonna lose out on oxygen and they're gonna die. So they do not bite in that fresh muddy water where you have a lot of sediment. So just remember that not all muddy water is created equal. There are very small differences and it's extremely important to pay attention to those differences. Now, before we get into the remaining two tips, I just wanna let you guys know that this video is brought to you by the Deep Dive app. This is an app that you can download on your phone and you can actually select the body of water that you're fishing and then you can input data that you are seeing. You can put in the water temperature, like we're talking about, you can put in the water clarity. You can also put in if you're fishing around vegetation or in a windy or protected area. Once you put that information in, the app is going to spit out some locations, some lures, and some strategies for you to go and attack your body of water. It can greatly help you to find bass quicker on the body of water that you are fishing. And if you would like to help support the Bass Fishing HQ channel, click that link for the Deep Dive app down below and download it today. Now, muddy water rule number two comes down to the lure selection. Now, anytime I am facing muddy water situations, there are three main characteristics that I look for in a lure, and they are all similar, but they are all a little bit different. Now, those characteristics are vibration, noise, 
and water displacement. Now, what all three of those characteristics do is they help to make the strike zone of a bass bigger in muddy water, meaning that he will come from farther away to hit your bait. A lot of times why we simply don't catch as many bass in muddy water is the lures that we use, you might literally have to hit that bass in the face for him to eat it. Now, if you select lures that have those three characteristics, a bass may come from a foot or two foot away to hit the bait. So let's talk real quick about those three characteristics because although they're similar, they're also a little bit different. Now, vibration. This is, this is one that's pretty simple, right? Lures that have a lot of vibration, like a spinner bait or a chatter bait, those are ones that I typically pick up in muddy water. Vibration, a bass is going to be able to sense that with its lateral line, and therefore it can hone in on that bait. Now, the other thing is noise. This is also something that is fairly simple. Now, a lot of baits will come with rattles in them, like square bills. This is a great bait that I use all the time in muddy water, a square bill with rattles. Now, the other thing that you can do is add rattles to your baits. For example, some jigs that I use, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about jigs in just a second, but some jigs that I use don't come with rattles. You can actually put rattles on a jig. You can also take rattles and shove them into baits like a tube. This will simply allow that you know, that soft plastic or jig to, to have more noise. Again, allowing a bass to be able to find it from a distance. Now, the third characteristic is water displacement. And this is one that I think is a little bit overlooked by a lot of guys, but I have seen it be a huge difference is that simply selecting a bigger bait in muddy water will help you to get more bites because that bigger bait is going to displace more water, which again allows bass to find it from a distance. A lot of times in the mud, like I talked about, I like to fish a jig. It's one of my favorite muddy water baits, but when I'm fishing in muddy water, I like a bigger profile jig, not necessarily a heavy weight jig, just a bigger profile jig. So I'm still gonna use a lot of times that three eighths or half ounce size jig that I always do, but I'm gonna make sure it has a full skirt on it. I'm not gonna trim the skirt down at all, as well as I'm gonna use a bigger trailer on it, a bigger soft plastic trailer, okay? That big profile jig, I have seen that be the biggest difference in getting a few extra bites throughout the day as opposed to using a smaller jig or a smaller soft plastic. So vibration, noise, and water displacement are three characteristics you want to make sure your lure has in muddy water. Now, muddy water rule number three is stay shallow. For a lot of you guys, this may be extremely easy because you just enjoy fishing shallow no matter what. Now for me, I actually, prefer to fish offshore structure. I just, that's just what I like to do. And I really have to make myself stay shallow when I'm fishing in the mud. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that you can't fish off the bank, but what I am saying is stay shallow. I like to fish typically less than about five or six foot of water in that muddy, muddy water. And the other thing is, is that bass typically are going to be extremely tight to cover in muddy water. This is something that is really, really important is that you wanna fish target oriented stuff, stuff that you can see with your own eyes because bass will be snug against the cover. If you think about it, if I were to turn the lights off in this garage and I couldn't see anything, the first thing that I'm gonna do is, is try to find a wall. I'm gonna try to get as close to a wall as possible. That way I can navigate without running into the lawnmower and the tractor and all that stuff. A bass is kind of similar. It, it, and when that, when that water goes from clear to muddy, they can't see. So what do they do? They like to get tight to cover, right up against shallow cover. So stay shallow, focus on cover, pick out those lures, and you guys are gonna catch a lot more fish in muddy water. If you guys enjoyed this kind of talk about muddy water situations, I did another video right here about stained water. It's a little bit different, a little bit clearer, but not super clear. And I'm gonna leave a link for that video right here. Also, if you wanna help further support the Bass Fishing HQ channel, you can click right here and purchase from my apparel company, Fin Fishing. Comment below, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next video.